What's good everybody, welcome back to my channel, I'm Zamir from XCC Tunes. In this video, we're gonna compare the piano roll or key editor in Cubase or piano view in Studio One. Both Studio One and Cubase have great MIDI features. We're gonna check them out today and let's see which is better, okay? So I'm gonna start with Cubase. Okay, this is called MIDI event in Cubase, right? If you double click on this, it will open the lower zone which contains the key editor or you can enlarge the key editor like so okay key editor it's very organized you can see here we have this global track i can enable each of these tracks to be visible here if i don't want it i can just disable them and i can minimize this global track and it applies to all the other tracks here so expression map node expression and everything okay which is very very useful so let's go to Studio One and see what Studio One has. So let me double click on this MIDI event. Okay, it's gonna open the lower, um, I don't know whether they call this lower zone or what, but it's actually a smaller window. And uh, I can see a lot of stuff here, which is also cool. So let's enlarge them and see in a bigger view. So we have this piano roll view here, which is cool. Okay, and you can access the global track here. Marker, Ranger, and so on. But let me add a video track. Let's see if the video track is visible here. If I'm not wrong, it does. I've enabled the video track. Video track is not visible here. Not sure why though. In the MIDI event here, within this global track, these are the only options available to view. Okay, so that's a little bit different from Cubase. Okay, let's go back to Cubase now. In order to create a node, you, you can press Alt and drag in Cubase. So when I drag it, it can actually kind of snap. If I've enabled the snap, here is the snap function. Okay. And I can press Q to quantize. And the quantize value is right here. Okay. Let's go to Studio One and check them out. Okay. In Studio One, it is the same so when I select this I can come here and adjust the grid value and then I can quantize them by pressing Q is the same thing and I can also draw the node by pressing uh, control and drag and now the snap is enabled so it's gonna snap to the grid okay however if you want to disable the snap press N you can draw the node freely okay so that's cool so let's go back to Cubase. Okay, in Cubase, when I select them, these nodes, you can see it's highlighting these nodes here, C, E, G, okay? But in Studio One, that is not the case. When I select them, you, you don't see them here. It's not a big deal, but I'm used to having them highlighted here in the piano notes here. Because if, let's say, I'm editing something here, right? If, let's say, it is a small view if it's like this which I don't see the notes being the note name being appeared here right so if I select this I don't see the notes being highlighted in the piano row so sometimes that is kind of bummer however when I select this I can see that this it's actually showing the selected chord okay so that is useful yep let's go back to Cubase Okay, in Cubase, we have all these scale assistant. If I want to enter my scale, I can come here and select the scale that I want. I can also create my custom scale if I want here, all right? And I can um, make the pitch editing snap to the scale. So for example, if I go to other notes, for example, F sharp here, it will not allow me to go to F sharp because F sharp is not in the scale of C harmonic minor okay so that is cool and I can also show scale note guides which is if I en enable that it's if all the notes within the scale will be shown in a much lighter color than the one in the black so the one in the black means this note doesn't belong to this scale okay and then we have the snap live input where we can play something live well, let's say we press the wrong note 
it's going to snap to the right node. Okay, so let's say if Studio One have this feature. So in Studio One, you can do the same where you can select the key here, right? But they don't have the feature where we can add our own scale. Okay, not yet. In order for you to enable this scale, you have to check on this. If it's not checked, it's not enabled. All right. So once it is checked, you can see all this blue color. This blue highlighted nodes is the node belongs to this C natural minus scale. Okay. And let's see if it snapped to the correct node. It does. Okay. So now when I move it around, it doesn't allow me to go to the nodes that does not belong to this scale. So that is cool. Um, I'm not really sure whether they have the live input here. Do they have? Okay, let me record something right here. I played a bunch of wrong note here. C natural minor uh, does not contain the node C. Yeah, see this? This C sharp note does not belong to the, the scale of C natural minor. So it didn't automatically snap to the right note. Okay, so they don't have it yet. Okay, never mind. Let's go to Cubase again. Okay, now we're going to check out the controller lane here. Okay, we have this controller lane where we can add all the necessary controllers. For example, modulation, pitch band, aftertouch, poly pressure, and on all these cool controller lane. Okay, I really like pitch band because it allows me to snap to semitones, you know. So now we have it uh, in 12 semitones up and 12 semitones down okay and i can change the settings if i want i can have it like just like seven semitones up and seven semitones down okay and now it's gonna snap within that range seven high and seven low so this is very cool and we also have this uh like modulation we can draw in the modulation the snap is turned on, that is why you, it looks like this. But if I turn off the snap, I can draw even freely, so it looks better. Okay, and I can adjust the curve like so, and I can highlight them, can decrease, increase, can ramp it up, ramp it down, and so on. So that is cool, and I can add as many control lane I want. So we have main volume, velocity, modulation, pitch band. So there's no restriction of how many control lane I can add. Okay, so let's go to Studio One. Let's check that. Okay, in Studio One, they have not controller. Okay, we have this pitch and timber. And we can also add more controller lanes. Okay, so there's no a restriction like how many not controller lane that we can open. Some door does not allow that, if I'm not wrong. Okay. And let's check for the pitch band. I'm not sure if they have this feature with the pitch band. I don't know if we can snap it to the grid. No, it doesn't. And here's a button where I can minimize the control lane if I don't want to see them all the time. So that's cool. About the pitch band, I don't know whether they have the similar uh, feature where in Cubase we can set the semitones. So any of the Studio One user out there, please let me know if such is possible. Okay. Um, right. Let's go to Cubase now. Okay. Uh, so in terms of quantizing, uh, it's the same thing with Studio One and Cubase both have the same key command, which is Q to quantize. I can select the quantize value here and I can press Q to snap it to the grid. Okay, and I also have the humanize feature where I can quantize swing, uh, this rough quantize, and so on. 
Okay, so we have looked at scale assistant, we've looked at the quantize. Let me go back to Studio One. Okay, now let's check the quantize feature in Studio One. I'm going to select all, press Q to quantize them. Okay, now this value is set here, quantize. This value is set here, so I'm going to go to 8 node. I'm going to control Z and let's quantize them. Okay, this is the same. And if I want to enable the swing function, I can come here and enable them. And I can increase them like so. And then press Q again. And now it will have that swing effect. And for the velocity, okay, for the velocity, right? I, like, I really like the velocity features here. I can come here, select the note. And I can increase the velocity by pressing and dragging or up or down let me turn off these audition notes okay so i can drag up to increase the velocity drag down to decrease the velocity and if you want to see this bar you can go to this note color here you can click on this drop down menu go to uh, velocity bar make sure that this velocity bar is checked so you can see uh the the value here the value of the velocity now i can just drag up and down and I can see the velocities uh, amount there okay and also in Cubase they have more features such as the chord editing so if I select this one and I know what chord it is A flat major 7 with C in the bass okay uh, I'm not sure whether this feature is available in studio one let me just double check okay when I select this I can see the chord here this is a C7 sus4 with G in the base. Okay, never mind. Let's select all of them. So C7 sus4. Okay. So the chord value or the, or the chord name is shown here, which is cool. Let's go to QB. Okay, if I want to create a chord, I can come here and select the chord that I want, whether it's a major or minor. So I can just come and select the note here C so it's going to create the chord for me let me ene okay let me change the value here okay so I'm going to create another chord now minor okay this is going to be a C minor chord so, so that's useful I don't know whether studio one has it Do they have a scale input chord? Okay. No, they don't have it. Unfortunately, they don't have it. Okay. So, so far, MIDI functions in Cubase is really quite advanced compared to Studio One. However, there is one thing in Studio One that I like the most. Actually, there's a couple of things that I like the most. So, one of it is when I open this MIDI event. Um, I can select other instrument by clicking on this button here. So we have bass, brass, and guitar. In Cubase, you don't, you can't do that. So once you open this key editor, this is the only MIDI event that you can work with. So that sucks. In order for you to edit multiple instruments together simultaneously, you have to highlight them, double click on it, and now you can see each of the core all the notes from other instrument and if you want to edit them you can come here and select whichever the instrument that you want to edit okay so that's one of the thing that I like in studio one where I don't have to go back to the song page view and then and then open this MIDI editor again okay another cool part is I can enable this and I can see the ghost note of the other instrument and if I want to edit them, I can click on this button here, which will allow me to edit both of the instrument at the same time. Okay. Another cool part is where I can right click on this and go to transfer node and transfer the nodes from this particular instrument to another instrument. That is super powerful, man. I don't have to go back to any page in order for me to do that. So when I'm writing counterpoint or any harmonies for orchestration i prefer to work this way so i might missed a couple of things from studio one's key editor or piano view 
uh, editor. So I apologize for that because I'm still new to Studio One. However, the functionality of both the Cubase and Studio One when it comes to MIDI, they're both powerful. Some feature I like in Cubase, some feature I like in uh, Studio One, especially when it comes to workflow, Studio One really shines. And when it comes to features, Cubase has more features, I think. I'm not sure, I haven't completely explored Studio One yet, but I will keep you guys posted, all right? So that's it for today, guys. If you guys find this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe, turn on notification, smash the like button and, and share this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.